Joe Kuhn here, your reliability man, with the topic of the day brought to you by Lean Driven Reliability. How to eliminate and what are the secrets to eliminating emergency work, unplanned work? Great. Appreciate the questions coming in. I've gotten about 12 on this topic. I want to make special note of Joel and Rick, uh, who wrote me long emails on this topic and what they were fi fighting. And this is exactly what Lean Driven Reliability is about, bridging that gap between uh, your, your reality and what best practices tell you to do. You know, in, in this case, you know, people are saying your, your planned work should be 90% and you're at five. You know, how do you get there? It gives you a sense of powerlessness when you think, I know what the best practices are, I just can't figure it out how to get there, given the challenges at my plant, with the staffing, the pressures, the expansion in volume, all those things that are happening. Uh, there's a gap in between reality and what the best practices are. So here I am uh, attempting to close that for you uh, based on my experience. Uh, the first thing you need to know is that I have found in my 32 years one way, just one way of eliminating, uh, and not to zero, but eliminating a substantial amount of uh, emergency work, and that is through planned work. Okay, so hope is not a plan. Hoping next week will be better. That's not that's not a plan. Um, you have to uh, get there through planned work. Now, you don't start out at ninety percent. How about ten? You know, here's an example of what I have recommended to several folks and have done myself. If you got a craft group of ten, and they're all doing emergency work, every day is a new day. You come in with all these ideas, and it's just a you know, the drama and emotion of production just rule every day and you hope next week will be better. Take one of those individuals and put them on planned work. Have the other nine do the same old thing, okay? Just survive the day, but have one do planned work. Sit down with that technology team, your group of techs, your group of craftsmen, whatever you call them, maybe have a one reliability engineer, whatever you have, get them together and say, guys, we're in this together. What's the top thing affecting us? What's the top two? Let's list five of the top things affecting us. Let's prioritize that and said, hey, if we can work on one of these and make an impact on one, what would it be? What would it be? What's number two and what's number three? And then have this one individual dedicate their eight, or eight hours a day, Monday through Friday to improving that one facet of the business. For example, it could be lube. Say you're having a lot of lube failures. It's involved in everything. Have this person ensure that we're doing all the greasing and all the oiling that, that is required by the manufacturers and in, in, you know, in their recommendations. So we're doing that, okay? For a solid month, do that with that individual, maybe two months, okay? So that's what I'm talking about. Letting everybody else do the normal, same old, same old, uh, but this one person dedicated uh, to that. Now, what, what's best is if, if you have a group of 10, rotate that every month. You know, uh, let uh, Jane take it this month and Jim take it next month and, and Claire take it the month after that. Rotate that so everybody is engaged, everybody's enthused, and everybody's a part of the solution. Uh, and, it, and those other nine that are doing emergency work, they're feeding information to this one. Uh, so it's one big team effort. Okay, so how do you start this? You know, the first thing I would do is uh, I'd go to the leadership team and I'd say, I want to run a 90-day experiment. If you say I want to make this change, everybody will argue pro and con and blah, blah, blah. But if you say it's a 90-day experiment, everybody knows it's going to resurface again and we're going to make a decision based on the data. So ask for a 90-day experiment to do this, separate out this one person, you know, and let the other nine do the, do the unplanned emergency work. I'm telling you, uh, this will work. It has worked at my facility. See, uh, let, let me check on my list here, rotate. In four to five months, you'll be shocked what happens. And then all, as you're going along, maybe two or three months into this, you may be able to put two people on planned work, and then three people, and then four people. You know, at my plant, we picked two. It was lubrication and motors. Motors was very expensive, constantly having unplanned work for that. It was just a huge drain of, of the resources. And remember, 
uh, that for every one hour you invest in planned work, you're eliminating 10 hours of unplanned work in the future. You got to leverage that. That's the reason why planned work works and the reason why it's the most efficient way and the best practice. But you got to start small. Start with 10%, okay? Start with 10% and leverage that. Start with one person out of your crew, then go to two, then go to three. It works. So my plant did two. What are your two? So that's the lean driven reliability action for next week is sit down with your leadership team and ask for a 90 day experiment to get out of this reactive mode that you're in. If you're at 10% unplanned work or 10, 10%, yeah, 10% planned work, sit down with your lead team and say, hey, here's my plan to get to 25. Here's my plan to 25. I wanna do this experiment for nights. It's worked for me. It's the only thing I found to work in my 32 years. Good luck to you. Two things in closing. Number one, if you like what you're hearing, uh, hit subscribe and the alert button. And also below, you'll note that I have added an email for Lean Driven and Reliability. Please give me your comments and questions and I'll try to work them into the uh, content. Thank you, bye.